So, Jeremy, from version 2.2 of GNS3, you made a lot of changes. So, one of those changes, and I just want to emphasize for everyone watching, this is not just for 2.2, it's from version 2.2. So, from version 2.2 of GNS3, one of the big changes that I really like is this link detection options. So, it's going to detect when something happens in GNS3. Is that correct? Oh, this is correct. So, yes, for instance, if you interconnect two nodes, yep. like R1 and R2, yep. And you, you pause the link or you delete the link, uh, then the the routers will know the link has been has been has been deleted or paused. Yes, yeah, so I mean, in previous releases of GNS3, if I did a show IP interface brief, let's say on a Cisco router as an example, it would see this as up, up even when I've deleted the link, yeah? Exactly, yes. And on the same on this side, so they see it as up, up. But in this version with link detection, GNS3 is doing something to inform the operating systems. Is that right? So like if I'm running iOS V here, yeah. it's telling the, the operating system that the link has gone down, so this will go up, down. Exactly. Or yes. down, down, depending on the device, yeah? Yes, and this is really important for to test protocol conversions. Uh, yes. So, if for instance, you have a OSPF between those two two devices. Yep. Uh, so OSPF will be informed that the link has been cut. Yeah. So as an example, if you had gig zero zero and gig zero one here, just as an example, and you removed that link in GNS three, uh, the devices will know that that's gone down, and then they'll converge across, say, another link. Exactly. Yeah. Instead of waiting for the timeout. Yeah, because that was a big problem. There's always the a timeout, but you have to wait. Like, I don't remember for SPS, but yeah, at least a depends few on the interface. Minutes, yeah. Maybe. yeah, it takes a while. Like, yeah, the dead based on the dead time of the yes. protocol. Mm. And I mean, like with BFD and other protocols, um, because well, let me ask you the question: How quick is this um, detection? Is it like almost instant? This is almost in instant. Yes. Okay. As soon as you cut the link, we inform the server, and then it, it's done. Well, that's brilliant. So I mean. Again, so if you're doing like um, protocol testing with OSPF or even spanning tree, stuff like spanning that. Tree, everything that uh, needs to know the status of a link. And that's, um, yeah, as soon as the link goes down. So just so that everyone's aware, this is both for suspend and for deleting a link, yeah? Yes. So if I physically go into GNS3 and I remove that link, but what's the, sorry, go on. Uh, yes, one important uh, information here. Uh, this will only work with QMU and uh, VirtualBox. So when you s so if you use Dynamips, is this is not going to work because we cannot tell Dynamips uh, that the, the link has been uh, cut or paused. Okay, so it's QMU and VirtualBox. Yes. So those work. Uh, Dynamips doesn't work. Dynamips does not, does not work. So it will work if you use uh, the viral images with QMU. This is not going to work if, if you use uh, any classic iOS image with Dynamics. It's like a 7200 won't work? No, this is not going but to work. But iOS V will work. iOS V, iOS V, L2, all the appliances running on QMU, this is going to work. But this is an interesting one, VirtualBox. VirtualBox. What about VMware? Uh, no, VMware, um, I don't think we, we support it because we, we have no way to tell VMware uh, about the link status. Okay, so in other words, if you added devices to your topology, this, like, let's say it's a Windows PC, that would have to run in VirtualBox for this feature to work. Yes. But does it work with Docker? Uh, with Docker, uh, I would have to check. I don't remember. <laughs> That's okay. So um, I think we support it with Docker, yes. So we'll, I'll, I'll, do, I'll add a, a video below this uh, talking about Docker because that would be great with Docker. I must actually test that because then you, with Docker, you don't have these you don't have to have a heavy operating system. Yes. And VPC, VPCS? No, no, no. No VPCS. VPCS, no. So it's only QMU, VirtualBox, yes. and perhaps Docker, which we'll check, yeah? Yes. Brilliant. Anything else to say about this feature? Uh, no, I think that's uh, everything. Great. So what's, what about another feature? Another big one I, I heard about is, is Hyper-V. What is that about? So Hyper-V. So we have Hyper-V support from version 2.2. .2. Yeah. 
So it basically means you can run the GN3 VM in Hyper-V on Windows, and uh, you have some restrictions uh, here. So you can only run in uh, Windows 10 Anniversary Edition or later, or Windows Server 2016 or later. Okay. That's the first restriction. And the second restriction is you have to, to use uh, Intel uh, processors, like your system has to run on, on a, an hardware with Intel processors. So at the moment, and that could change, Yes, but at the Mi Microsoft might, might, decided, might, might decide they want to support AMD as well. They might do it later or not. We, we have no control on this. Okay, so just so that I understand, the reason why Hyper-V only works with Intel is because of nested virtualization. Because of nested, nested virtualization. So nested virtualization is only supported with Hyper-V on Intel processors. That's a Microsoft thing. That's not a GNS3 no, thing. No, that's, that's not a GNS3 thing. So the advantage here, if I draw this again, is I have a Windows computer and I'm running Windows as my operating system. Now I run the GNS3 VM directly within Hyper-V on Windows yes. rather than having to install the GNS3 VM inside VirtualBox on Windows. So, and it's native. Yeah, it's native. So as I said, like Windows 10, I think all version of Windows 10 support Hyper-V uh, and of course uh, server editions of uh, Windows also support Hyper-V. But the two big problems is it must be an Intel processor. That's a main, uh, main restriction. And it has to be a specific version of Windows. Yes. And you, well, another one actually is it has to, your, your BIOS, you have to go into the BIOS and enable nested virtualization. Uh, no, you are, uh, yes, you have to, to enable nested virtualization. With Hyper-V, yeah? With Hyper-V, yes. Okay, great. Anything else to say about Hyper-V? Um, is it, is it, so f at 2.2, .2, is it, is it experimental or is it a, f a feature? It's still experimental. Uh, everything should work the same as if you run the Gen3 VM with VMware or VirtualBox, uh, excepting there may be some, some issues. Like the, we, were, we heard like if you run IOU and KMU at the same time in the Gen3 VM with Hyper-V, then the VM will crash. Okay, so that's a problem in 2.2. So depending on when you're watching this, it could be fixed, like in 2.3 or something. It could be fixed. Uh, we don't know what, why is VM crash, but that's, that's, uh, that's an issue. But that, yeah, that's something for later. It could, yeah. it could be fixed, but we don't know at the moment, yeah? Yeah. Okay, great. So that's Hyper-V. Um, one of the big features that came out in 2.2, and depending, again, when people are watching this, um, is the web UI. So w w what is that and why is it nice? Uh, so the web UI will um, eventually replace the desktop UI. <coughs> but yep. in, in version 2.2, uh, the web UI is uh, read-only. Yeah. And maybe you, you will be able to, to move nodes. Yeah. Uh, start a node, stop a node but we don't support the uh, console yet. So there's no console in web UI in version 2.2? In 2.2. Uh, it will come after version 2.2. So, so that may, I mean, it's at the time of this recording, we're not sure, but um, depending when you watch this, it could come in 2.3 yes. or later, yeah? The goal is uh, in 2.3 or another version is to have a full version of the web UI. Okay, great. So. Just so that everyone understands, we currently have, before 2.2, .2, we have a Windows GUI executable, as an example. Um, on a Mac, we have DMG. Yes. Uh, we have an application on Linux as well. Yes. Um, this is like what I like to call the fat client or the thick client, whatever you want to call it. Um, that may eventually go away and be replaced with us, yeah? Yes, it's not going to happen tomorrow or anytime soon. Yeah. It, it could take a few years. But eventually, what we would like to do is uh, have only the web UI. Okay, so eventually, web UI. 2.2, uh, .2 it's read-only, but you can enable experimental features. You, you can en enable experimental features. And then you can move nodes around. And you can move nodes create around, links. create links, uh, think create nodes, uh, do a few actions like this. Uh, but it's, 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 uh, the web UI in 2.2 is more to show what we, we have been working on, what's coming. Uh, you can play with it, but it's not going to replace the 
fat client yet. Okay, great. Okay, what other feature have we got in 2.2 or from 2.2 that you want to talk about? We have a new uh, GS3 VM. Yeah, let's talk about, okay, so another one that we've got is the is the is the GNS3 so, VM changes, doesn't it? Yes, we have updated the uh, GNS3 VM. Uh, especially, we have uh, upgraded the operating system, which is Ubuntu 18.04. Okay, so we've moved from what was it before? I was Ubuntu 16.04. Uh, okay, so 16.04, that was in version 2.1. Yes, and then this is version 2.2. Exactly. Uh, we also made some improvements. Uh, you can upgrade to any GNS3 version you want. Uh, like you say, oh, I only want version 2.2.1. You can you can select that in the in the list. Okay. Uh, can you upgrade your current GNS3 VM to this VM? No, we, you cannot upgrade. You will have to download the GNS3 VM for version 2.2. Yep. But we will provide um, a way to migrate all your projects, images, all the da da uh, GNS3 data from one VM to the other. So basically you have like 2.1 in a VM, 2.2 in a VM. You have both VMs running at the same time. Yes. And then you've got like a migration tool yes. where you can migrate the data from one to the other, yeah? Yes. And then I think you mentioned there's two ways to do it. You can do something with a yeah, disk. Also another way is to, is to take the virtual disk from one VM yep. and attach it to the other VM. So you, you would shut this one down? Yes. And then you would do a move of the... Yeah, you will, you will basically copy the file okay. to the other VM. And then attach it to that, yeah? Yeah. Otherwise, what you do is you have both running. Then you go into the GNS3 menu on this VM. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. And then you select an option that says um, migrate data. Yeah. And then you need to give the IP address of that guy. Exactly. Yes. That's and then it copies it across somehow. Yes. Across a network or locally. Or locally. Yeah. That's great. Yeah.